Hello to everyone who's watching this footage. It's Leviathan again. I apologize for the intermission that was out of place for you guys of waiting on me to uh, make another footage for you guys. I don't want to leave you guys hanging, and I want to have a decent reputation for my uh, footages and such. And this one might be new to you guys. This is a full-on storyline of the very first character I've made in my Leviathan universe, Madam Shear. And also, uh, since... This is going to be my first storyline. I just hope you guys would be able to catch up with what I'm reading in order to know the backstory of how Madame Shear came to be and such. And I just hope you would appreciate it. Let's get into this and make sure to listen if it's fine with you. Madame Shear number one, the beginning. Created and copyrighted by Levi Corsi Ames on July 11, 2015. In the beginning of this story, we start traveling across in autumn New York in 1987, where we find ourselves observing a small apartment room where a married couple and their four-year-old daughter was watching some documentaries about the past wars that the United States was going through. This story is particularly about the daughter. Her name is Kimberly Elinda Blader. Daddy, Daddy, Kimberly said, please turn it up a little. And he increased the volume of the television of the time period. Most would expect a little girl to be watching cartoons like most other kids. But for Kim, however, she was fully fascinated with American war movies. Now we flash forward into the 21st century where Kim had grown up and decided that in order to protect her friends, family, and country, she would be best at making futuristic weapons for future battles. By adulthood, Kim now has lux luscious black hair, brown eyes, and a high IQ number from all the engineering skills that she learned in her past. In this scene, Kimberly had cut the red ribbon to declare the birth of her home and workplace, Blader Tech Tower, which is easily recognized by a series of metallic shards lined up around the disc-shaped scalp of the building. After that, Dr. Blady, Dr. Blader had created the uh, official security system of the tower which she had since named Maya, which is short for Major Assistance on Yearly Advancements. But eventually things would end up changing Kim's life forever. After a few months of the dedication, Kim was working in her main lab until she started hearing a hard slamming on her laboratory door, and a group of Mexican gangsters burst in and started invading the lab with their master, a Mexican game lord named Ferdinand Savage, or simply Boss Savage, followed behind them. Later, she yelled, why wouldn't it ever occur to you to give us some weapons? And Kim simply replies, this is the 20th time. You gotta pay for them with your own money. This reply completely offended Savage. Well then, Dr. Blader, looks like we have to get them the hard way. He then snaps his fingers on his right hand, and the gangsters started throttling her with baseball bats and knives making her partially disoriented and leaving two cut marks on her face. After doing that, Savage commands his gang to steal some plasma cannons, and before they left, one of the members stuck a bomb onto a wall for 15 seconds. Last thing that Kimberly knew was the sound of a beeping and a deafening explosion, and from that point on, she was never again the same. She then got awakened by the fluorescent lights from the ceiling and found herself lying on a metal gurney, when Maya appeared and started telling her some life-changing news. Dr. Blader, she began, I am horribly, horribly sorry, but you need to know something. Kim then got mostly awake and says, What exactly happened, or do I not want to know? Maya then continued, The explosion had almost destroyed the entire lab and amputated you from the elbow down on both arms, and I did the best option possible for you to survive. She then bent up, and found that she now had metallic blades for hands. Each hand possessed five blades for fingers ranged in different lengths, although they were identical. She also found that each blade had inner joints that bend like normal fingers. Ah, she gasped. Why would this ever happen? she asked Maya. Like I already mentioned, this is the best plan I could figure out for you, sir. After a few hours, Kimberly trained herself how to use her new hands, and she then realized something. If I have these blades that could leave permanent scars for best case scenario, then I should use it to protect people. She then asked Maya, where's the best option for me to learn some fighting skills? And Maya replies, 
through the global examination, I say that the best person to teach you is a martial arts instructor found in the jungles of China. She is known as Sight, and she proclaims to be one of the best fighting instructors in the planet. Okay then, Maya, please transport me there. Through a special teleporter in her lab, Kimberly had found herself climbing the oriental steps to a Chinese lair that appeared to be isolated due to the severe number of vines and bamboo lined all across it. After she got in, Kim started calling out, Hello? Is anyone here? Would like to learn how to fight my enemies. Suddenly she saw that a young Chinese woman wearing a tan oriental robe had appeared to her. She is carrying a quarterstaff that seemed to be more like iron than wood in terms of durability, and she is also wearing a silver headband that fully covered her eyes. Are you what they call Sight? Kimberly asked her. Yes, I am Sight, but my real name is Susie Long. I was born with a condition that made me blind for life, and many people bullied me for it. From that point, I decided to fight back and become a martial arts instructor for anyone who needs training. She then reached out her left hand. Can I feel your presence? And Kim replies, I don't know, I might cut you. I'll be careful. And Susie starts rubbing her hands onto hers gently. What is your name? Sight asked her. I am Dr. Kimberly Brader. And she finally answered, Well, Kimberly, you are now allowed to be a student for the art of combat. After a few weeks of training, Kimberly found that she now has the agility, speed, and fighting potential of a common ninja. In her last battle in training, Sight finally announces, Congrats, Kimberly. You are now a highly qualified fighter. Enjoy your time in future battles. Thank you very much, Susie, Kim finally replies. Meanwhile, during a night in a warehouse in New York, Boss Savage was telling his gang his new plan that involves using the stolen weapons to mark a disaster upon the city. Suddenly, they were starting to notice something moving in the shadows. It then walked up to the lights and revealed itself to be Kimberly. She's now wearing a bulletproof latex suit, and she has her hands hiding behind her back. Well, we meet again, sissy. Did you get so knocked out you forgot what happened? Savage said as the crew started laughing at her. This outraged her to yell at them, saying, Save that to my blades, losers! And she exposed her hands, making the gangsters gasp in shock. Try to fight me, Nimrods. They now started attacking her but her blades were slashing the gangsters one by one, with their blood gushing out of every cut. And she was so agile that they were unable to catch up with her. Boss Savage then tries to throttle Kim with a metal pipe, but she kept dodging his attacks and did a dragon kick that launched him onto a concrete wall. Losing his nerve, he tried to sprint at her to sock her face, and she ducked under the punch and gave him a series of stabs to his torso. Moaning in pain, Savage had fallen to his knees when Kimberly finally said, How do you like me now, Bozo? And she did a slapping slash across his face, knocking him out. After that happened, the NYPD had shown up to find that the gangsters were either killed from hemorrhaging or more dead than alive. A month later, Boss Savage was sentenced to six life sentences in prison, and the mayor of New York City, Mayor Dales, had made a ceremony to celebrate Kim's first victory. Dr. Kimberly Elinda Blader is such a fine woman who truly knows how to do things right for her friends. And I announce that she'll now have a solid gold medal for her success. And, she, and he places the medal around Kim's neck and decides to hug her instead of giving her a handshake in order to avoid getting scarred. Mayor Dales then continues by saying, Well, Dr. Blader, do you have anything you'd like to say to the Big Apple? And she finally revealed... Well, everyone, I've decided to focus the rest of my life fighting crime as frequently and successfully as possible for all of you. And the crowd cheered for her. And for now on, ladies and gentlemen, just call me by the name Madam Shear. She finally says, winking to the local news camera. And that moment was placed right onto the front cover of the national newspaper, which simply reads in fine print, Madam Shear, the bladed genius. The end. And, uh... That's the story, and I just hope you guys caught up with the message I was reading, because I was just trying to make it decent for you to visualize. I just hope it was entertaining and inspirational, and I just hope it would be very efficient for this podcast and for my Leviathan universe to be immortalized in the long run. And for all those who would like to hear more about my creations and such, you could just 
put it, type it down on the comment down below, and like and share and all that stuff, and subscribe if you want. And until next time, it's Leviathan, and hope you guys are willing to learn more in the future. Enjoy your times and your lives and such, and transmission.